Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. We're almost there, folks. The wait is nearly over. Four more days to go until the Cheltenham Festival. Welcome along to the Racing Post weekend postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and I'm delighted to be joined by Tom Park and Paul Keeley from the Racing Post and making a very, very warm welcome postcast return from Paddy Power. Back by very popular demand. He's been missed by the listeners and certainly by us as well. It's the great Frank Hickey. So, before we go, we have a good chat about Cheltenham uh, later on in the postcast. We'll obviously tackle all the weekend action. Uh, the big event, obviously, over the weekend is the Imperial Cup at Sandown, but there's some decent stuff for flat fans up at Wolverhampton. Potentially, weather permitting a very, very interesting clash at Kelso on Sunday between two very much loved chasers. And we've also got the Leinster National on Saturday, so hopefully the boys have got some value bets for that as well. So. Grab a pen and paper, there will be plenty of opinions, plenty of horses knocking around, some great tips both for the weekend and for Cheltenham. We'll start with the weekend though, and we'll start with the 225, the main event of the weekend, the 225 Matchbook Imperial Cup. Frank Hickey, take it away with a show of betting from Paddy Power. Yeah, what's wrong with you with 7 to 2, Le Patriot 5 to 1, Call Me Lord 6 to 1, Silver Streak 15 to 2, Friday Night Light 8 to 1, Master of Vinery 11 to 1. Philux 12 to 1, and we're 16's bar. Okay, this is a race that Nicky Henderson uh, last won in 2009. Three of the last six winners have been 20 to 1 or bigger. So, do we, Frank, row in with the favourite, or does some uh, value lurk further down the lists? Um, he looks very solid, to be fair. Um, I think his price is right. I think um, like he ties him with OK Corral, who's rated 144. I think he, he was getting six pounds when he beat him at Newbury, and he was. Very impressive the last day under a penalty. Um, but there's one at a price I kind of thought was a bit interesting um, of uh, Chris Gordon um, called Highway 101. Now, he's a big price. And I'm not saying he'll definitely win, but I think he's got a solid each-way chance. Um, he was a point winner, and he made his debut in a bumper at Newton Abbott where he thrashed a horse called Point of Principle, who I think, if I can remember correctly, was seventh in the Aintree bumper. But he wasn't a bad horse. And then he went to Pumpton to make a hurdles debut where he beat Pumpton um, very easily again. And Cohesion would have been around 100 horse on the flat and he was well fancy that day. But it's actually the run of Fontwell after when he was second to Des de Bief. Um, I know the pronunciation is poor there, but um, he was second to him, but he was giving him £13. And that one obviously ran really well in the Lanzarote. It's a strong fancy for a lot of people in the Martin Pipe next week at Cheltenham. Um, so... I, on that base, I think a mark of 133 might be fair enough on this Highway 101. Last time at Fontwell, he handled this off ground no bother and was actually powering away late in the day. Um, I think he'll be prominent and he'll keep going on the ground. There's a bit of rain forecast this evening. It could get quite testing tomorrow. Um, I think he's a fair each way price worth 20 to 1. OK, Frank, lovely stuff. Great to have you back. Like I say, Tom Park, who do you fancy for the Imperial well, Cup? I'm all, I'm all over what's wrong with you. I think... I, 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 Listen, I normally keep my powder dry at this time of year, but um, I think the fact that Nicky Henderson's running Call Me Lord, he's keeping the weights right down. He might be there absolutely on merit and might have a good chance himself, but I just think they, mu they must know that this horse has got a good chance um, off that weight. Um, I think he's around five to one. I think he'd be much shorter than that um, at w when they go off. Um, at a price... Um, Huntsman's son, I thought it was quite interesting, 16 to 1. Uh, he was second to Remeluk, I think, last time. Um, he ran well in the Betfair hurdle next time. James Bourne's taking £3 off, but I'd be, I, I, I do like this favourite, actually. Yeah. OK, Kills, who do you like? Uh, yeah, I've been doing this Cheltenham preview circuit, and I've also been talked about as much as any other. It has been this, what's wrong with you? So, uh, you know, virtually everyone I speak to says, oh, this thing's an absolute certainty on Saturday, and uh, it, it might well prove to be the case. But the market, you know, the past winners tell you otherwise. It's a very hard race to win, isn't it? You get loads of big prices. Um, I've, I backed earlier in the week Fidux, uh, trained by Alan King. Uh, just a little bit worried if we do get a lot of rain, and I don't live that far from Santa. It's becoming very dark over here as well, so I'd imagine it's coming very shortly. Um, but he, he's got some interesting form at Sandown. He, he unseated at the last when the hurdles swang back at him. Uh, behind Maria's Benefit, and uh, that was when Maria's Benefit was rated 117, and she's like 147 now, and uh, I think he'd have won that day. 
So, uh, and he was then fourth to a hair breath, uh, which is another decent bit of form there. Uh, trainer says he doesn't want the ground really soft, though. That's the, that 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 would be the problem with me. But I still think he's got a chance of shaking up a favourite. Okay, jolly good. Thank you, chats. Let's look at the one fifty, the first of the ITV four live races. It's the EBF Matchbook VIP NH Novices Handicap Hurdle. Eighteen runners. It's bloody difficult. Have we got a show of betting yet, Frank? Yeah, we do. Indian Hawk is favourite at five to one. Melrose Boy six to one. Al Shahir seven to one. Turtle Wars and the Russian Dying are ten to one. Canelo twelve to one, and we are sixteen to one bar. Kills, you can go first. Oh, man, this is really, really hard. I'm just going to bet a couple of complete bags uh, at, at big prices. Uh, one of them, Dashing Perk, uh, trained by Richard Newland. First time cheek pieces. The trainer is three from seven in first time cheek pieces in the last in the last couple of years. And this one, man. Ran, ran a fair race out, outside a novice company in a grade three handicap here, over two miles, seven furlong uh, last month. Uh, wasn't so good next time behind Whiskey in the Jar at Fakenham, but, you know, I think I think he's died, he's reasonably well handicapped on what he's done so far. Uh, and obviously Sam Twist and Davis rides for the first time uh, since October. Uh, and this is, you know, he's the go-to man for uh, Mr. Newland. It's, uh, I think he's ridden 81 winners for him in his career. So... Uh, I could, yeah, he's, a, he's a 20 to one shot and the other one uh, I think Nick Williams might have a good day today and Dentley to me uh, another one in first time cheek pieces is quite interesting he, he he's another one who stepped out of novice company and ran eighth in the Lanzarote which was a really good really good run uh, and I wasn't that disappointed with him next time at Exeter when, he, when he, the trip was a little bit too short uh, and he finished third I think a, a strong run race at this two and a half mile trip was suiting down to the ground so who are your two again Kills give us the names they're my two Dashing Perk and Dentley to me. Lovely stuff. Parky? Uh, I like Melrose Boy from, of Harry Fry's. Um, I thought he ran superbly at Sandown last time. He didn't quite see out the trip that day, so drop back in trip should, um, should suit. Um, he, he, he's been, the, the horses in this race, the ones towards the top of the market, they've been beating, they've been winning races, but they've not been that strong. This horse has been beaten by the likes of Mr. Whipped, top of the game. That's good form. Um, and I think off, I think he's off one three seven. I think he, he's, he could be well handicapped there and could be a good bit better than this. I'm not sure if it's really that strong a race. So, yeah, I think he'll give weight. I think he'll give the weight away to them. Melrose boy for Parky. Who for Frank? Um, a whiskey in the jar was entering the race for Dan Skelton. I think earlier in the week, and I think it might be significant. He's going to Kelso and leaving Al Shahir to go for this. Um, Al Shahir is bred to maybe. Uh, he's, uh, sorry, uh, he's he's bred. Um, He's only been running over two miles. He's bred to get a bit further. I think his half brother won over three miles. But um, he's run behind some fair types this season. He was beaten in Newton Abbey by Maria's Benefit, uh, Weatherby by Kalashnikov, and Lingfield by First Flow. So he was second in all three races, and all three of the, those will go to Cheltenham with some sort of a chance next week before winning. Uh, sorry, Frank. His, Frank, isn't whiskey? Uh, sorry, sorry, mate. Isn't whiskey in the jar, Ollie Murphy? Oh, sorry, sorry. It is actually, yeah. That's my mistake. Rushing this morning, but um, <laughs> even still, this horse is uh, this horse's form is really strong behind those uh, those horses. Uh, um, he's bred to get better, as I said. Uh, stepping up and trip. His mark of 127 looks very fair. Um, and I think he should improve for a step up and trip. Said um after t poster, this was the aim. Um, that was back in December, so uh, they put him away for this. Um, his mark is very fair, and I think he's about seven to one or so. I think it's a fair each way price. It's a tough race. Um, yeah, Melrose Boy, I definitely wouldn't put you off him. Uh, higher up weights have a decent enough record in this race too, which suggests the class horses seem to come to the fore. But um, yeah, I'll take a chance and answer here. OK, the three o'clock at Santa. Mayor's race, that's good, isn't it? We don't have many mayor's races anymore. Is there any, is there any races for male horses anymore? <laughs> Why don't they just give them the allowance and make them run against... You know, I don't get it. I really don't. I'm sure there's some sort of, you know... <coughs> proper earnest bloodstock related reason why we need to get more mares into the pool and do more to encourage them along but well I don't suppose anybody moans about the 1000 guineas and the oaks and stuff like that on the flat do they well I suppose not no that's a fair point alright I'll shut up yeah. uh, anyway it's the, it's the EBF Stallion slash TBA mares standard open novice hunt flat race final is a decent prize up for grabs and if you bat the winner you get paid out the same who will that winner be uh, Tom Park there's one, I'm not sure what price it is, it was 16 to 1. Well, let's get a show, actually. Yeah. What's, what's the latest betting from Frank? Yeah, do hallowed gestures, 3 to 1, Posh Trish, 7 to 2, uh, Urca de Lima, 5 to 1, Diamond Gate, 7 to 1, Queen's Cave, 7 to 1, Queen of Hearts, 8 to 1, 
and we are 11 to 1 bar. Right, the, ho the horse that I like is a horse called Queen's Cave. Um, when she won her point to point, uh, Derek O'Connor gave a really glowing report um, in his column just before the sale. He always picks three, um, three to like watch out for at the sale. And this was his top one. I think she went for about 175,000 to Pat David Pipe. Um, she bolted up on her first start at Utoxeter. There's a horse, the horse that she beat in a point to point by 10 lengths, one next time out. Um, as I said, I think she was 16 to one earlier in the week, but she could still be good value at seven to one. I know Pipe's had a tough season, um, but he bought a couple of promising horses in that sale. Uh, the other ones, Nor the Score, who's got a chance in the champion bumper. Um, and she, this mare could be quite good, I think. And, you know, some of the ones at the top have are quite exposed this um, already this season, like Posh Trish. This, this one could be quite good. OK. How many winners kills Jake and David Pipes had this season? Uh, I don't know. He hasn't had many, has he? That's for sure. Have a guess. Uh, 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 28. 26. Very good guess. Who would have thought it, eh? Bad, is it? 26. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, knew, I knew it was quite low. I knew just, there's a few trainers like that. Venetia Williams has had a terrible year. And obviously, Philip Hobbs for... For him, he hasn't even hit 50 yet. So You wouldn't rule uh, Pipey out from having a Cheltenham Festival winner next week, though, would you? Oh, uh, not at all. Not at all. OK, well, uh, anyway, back to, back to the three o'clock at Sandown on Saturday, Kills. Who passes yeah, the post there were two in that interest me. It's, it's, very, it's, it's a difficult race. But, Frank, what price was Amy de Sivilla? Um, One second there. Amy de Sivilla is 11 to 1. 11 to 1. I think that's a massive price. That was, she was second last time in a, in, a, in a listed bumper at Market Raisin. She was getting, you know... She's getting eight pounds off this lot. Um, Lizzie Kelly's off and Richard Johnson's on. Uh, I don't see her being that big. I think Racing Post Ratings has a top as well. Uh, and that would that would nearly do for me. I do quite like the look of Queen of Hearts as well as Stuart Edmonds. He seems to really like that horse. Fourth and a good bumper on uh, on debut and then uh, one very easily at Toaster. So won't mind running up a hill at Sandown. OK, do you fancy anything here, Frank? Uh, Mike McTom here. Um, I thought Queen's K is very interesting. Uh, as he said... The point she won was um, very strong. The second and third actually have come out and won. Uh, obviously cost a lot. She was well backed um, in that Utahxa race too. She went off four to five and she won very easily. She definitely falls into the could be anything bracket. And uh, seven to one, I'd probably chance her each way. Okay, the final race at Sandown on the box is the three thirty-five. It's the Matchbook Racing is Commission Free Handicap Chase. What's the latest betting, Frank? And then we'll stick with you for the winner. Uh, Tanner River five to two. Shannon Santos eleven to four. Uh, Horatio Hornblower at five to one, fourth act six to one, along with Pete the Feet, and we're at twelve bar. Um, yeah, Tant River did it well the last day. Took it up a fair bit out, travelled strongly, and um, won well. A boost on would be a good, um, a good market. That kind, a good kind of uh, level to the form. Um, and I think he'll be difficult to beat. He only got five pounds, I think. Um, yeah, I think he'll be very difficult to beat there. I know Shannon Rosantos won well the last day too, and has course form, but. Yeah, it'd be Tanner River for me. I know Tim Baum was very bullish about him, saying that he thinks he'll end up um, a proper Welsh national horse. So if that's the case, he'd want to be winning off, um, off his market. He's only 128, is he? Who so, do you like, yeah. Kills? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Tanner River will, will, will be hard to beat. Shamo Santos, I know he has one there. He tends to clout a bit. I don't think he's got round the last two times he's run at Sandown. Uh, one at a bigger price, Horatio Hornblower will go well. Uh, uh, Nick Williams with Sam Tristan Davis on. Uh, he he uh, was a good winner two starts ago and, and wasn't beaten that far uh, at Ludlow last time. Um, yeah, I, th I think uh, he'll be the danger to Tannock River. OK, kills fences a couple of Sam Tristan Davis. Also, don't forget Sam Tristan Davis and Willie Mullings, our exclusive Saturday columnist. Check out the newspaper on Saturdays to find out who they fancy. Who do you fancy in the 335 at Sandown Parky? I quite like fourth act. Um, Tizards have started to come back after his dreadful winter. Um, I think he'll appreciate the step up in trip. He got caught for a tour last time at Kempton. Um, he's in first time blinkers um, today. He's Listen, this horse was rated 137 a year or so ago, and he's down to 125 now. And if the blinkers do the job, um, and Tizards are running a little bit better, he could, he could prove well handicapped. Okay. God, you print your notes out? Yeah. I'm very impressed, Parky. Blimey, Kiel just stares at his phone. Everyone else just scrawls a load of stuff down. You've got all printouts. That's very flash. Okay. Congrat oh, you notes. Yeah, no, no, it's cheating, eh, Kills? Um, congratulations to Matt from Nottingham, who's won this week's competition. Matt, a free £25 bet, courtesy of Paddy Power, will be credited to your account. 
I hope you spend it wisely. The weekly free bet competition will resume after Cheltenham. Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. OK, the ITV4 cameras will be at Wolverhampton for two races, starting with the 205, the sunbets.co.uk Lincoln trial. What's the latest betting, please, Frank Hickey? Yeah, original choices, 2-1, to one, 5, Big Country, 9-2, Dragon Mall and Constantino, 7-1. to one. Pactolus with Demper are both 10 to 1 and we're 12 to 1 bar. OK, it's pretty obscene to be talking about flat racing uh, just before Cheltenham, so we'll be very quick here. I want the name of the horse and no more than 10 words on why it'll win. Sod your notes, Parky. Okay. Who's going to win it? I like original choice. Um, he's consist consistent, progressive, unexposed, best jockey in the world um, and want the one to beat. That was about 18, but that'll do, Kills. Yeah, well, only one of the last seven winners has, uh, has, has won this after a break from the autumn. They normally will run on the all-weather before, and so uh, I'll take Mr. Scaramanga. Only just got beaten nose by the, the hugely informed goring of E. e Johnson Hortons uh, last time, about 12 to 1, I think. OK, and Frank? Uh, original choice, be tough to beat. Um, uh, yeah, he looked progressive last year, ties in with Fire Brigade, is a decent capper, and he'll probably need to win if he's getting her on the Lincoln. OK, Frank, give us a show on the 3.15, the sunbets.co.uk, Lady Wolf Runa Stakes. Uh, second thoughts, 11 to 10, Salatine, 9 to 2, Early Morning, Mash and Star, 6 to 1, Muta with Tia, 12 to 1, and we're 16 bar. Kills? Uh, yeah, free each way bet, Salatine. Second thought will probably win, but Salatine won this race last year, it likes this course. Tom? I think second thought, sure. I like Massam Star, he's got some good form on the all weather. Was only beaten half a length by Mustachery, who went on to win a Group Three in the summer. Is he Masham or Masham? I always uh, wanted him to be called Masham. You may be right. Yeah, maybe. He's. But Masham starts one for you. And who for you, Frank? Um, I think second half would be very difficult to beat. Uh, he's five, five from five in the all weather, and he was only beaten like in a listed race at Newbury on the, on the turf at Group Three at Ascot, and of course behind uh, Harry Angel in the Group Two at Haylock. Um, I think. Yeah, Salatine and probably both in front, but I think second half pick him up. Uh, okay, Frank Kills and Tom have been too busy studying up everything at Cheltenham and over in the UK to even look at the uh, 3.40 at Leinster on Saturday, which is the tolls.com bookmakers, Leinster National. Have we got any prices yet? Yeah, if you give me one second, I'll try and talk them out for you. Okay. Um, Sorry, it's at Goran, isn't it? What am I saying at Leinster? There's not even a race course at Leinster. <laughs> I do apologise. Oh yeah, yeah. We actually we haven't have we haven't uh, updated prices. Okay, we haven't got prices, but you're going to give us the winner, aren't you? Uh, well, I'll give you something. Hopefully, that'll hit the frame at least. Um, obviously, pair pair of brown eyes is very interesting on his first start for Winnie Mullins, Steppy up and trip. We've seen what he's done with Total Recall this year. Um, he could potentially do the same with pair of brown eyes, but um, I think you can probably throw two darts at this um each way. Bonnie Kate is on the same mark as when third and highest is two years ago over course and distance and. She was third in the Troy Town as well off the same mark. Um, she handles heavy ground to stay. She should be involved. And Space Cadet is also off the same mark as when third in this year's play says. Um, we all know how how good a record Gord has in these staying handicap chases. And again, he looks very solid to run a good race. OK, let's do the roundup. Anything else that isn't your nap that you want people to know about because they should be back in? Parky, what have you got? I'll be very much keeping my powder dry for next week, I think. Yeah. Good man. Kills, what have you got? Yeah, no, I haven't got anything else either. OK, and what It'll about you, Frank? Day. Just won the five o'clock at Wolverhampton, a horse called Le Cab. Um, this will be a massive price. Um, he used to be trained by Rod Roger Varian, but... Um, he was gelded and had his first start for Derek Shaw, uh, I think at Wolverhampton over his course and distance a few weeks ago. Now, he's beaten 11 lengths, and if you're just looking at the form and say, oh, yeah, that's no chance. Go back and watch the video. He absolutely tanked through the race and looked like he was going to win turning in and just blew up, and, and he was eased um, late on. Um, this race probably looks a bit weaker again, and I'd say he could be 20, 16, 20 to 1. I'll definitely be having a few quid in him each way. Lovely stuff. Here are the horses, the three horses the lads think you should back to swell your Cheltenham coffers. This will not be beaten. Frank Hickey. Um, nap of the day, 335 Sandown, Tannet River. Paul Keeley. Uh, yeah, pure terms of value, I would say Amy De Civila in the three o'clock at Sandown. Can't see that being a double figure price. And Tom Park. Oh, I like what's wrong with you in the Imperial Cup. Lovely stuff. And that, of course, is the 2.25 at Sandown. Let's look at Sunday next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. 
Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, begumbleaware.org. Hi there, Bruce Millington, Tom Park, Paul Keeley and Paddy Powers, Frank Kiki. We're going to have a quick look at Kelso on Sunday and then we're going to get stuck into Cheltenham. Uh, Kelso, really good card if it goes ahead. You've got a clash between Bristol Demai and um, See You at Midnight. Yep. So that would be really interesting. The trouble is, of course, chucking it down with rain. There is a 10 o'clock inspection on Saturday. Uh, we'll start with the 315, Tom. It's the Tote Scoop 6 Premier Kelso Novices Hurdle. Who do you think is going to win this? I like the horse we mentioned earlier, Whiskey in the Jar of Ollie Murphy. He's, a, he's brilliant at finding the right races for the horses. Um, and he's, he looks like he's got a bit to do on figures, but um, he's looked very good on his last two starts and clearly progressing. I think, I think he'll be tough to beat. Kiels, you're, rub you're absolutely useless at my music questions, but you must know who had a hit with Whiskey in the Jar. No, I wouldn't have didn't, never even heard of the song. Frank? Uh, Tin Lizzy, wasn't it? Tin Lizzy, of course it was, yeah, absolutely. And if you go, if you walk out of the Westbury Hotel in Dublin and down the street there, you'll see a statue of Phil Lynott, the lead singer of Thin Lizzy. Anyway, who's going to win this, uh, Kills? 3.15 at Kelso on Sunday. Uh, yeah, I'm a whiskey in the jar man as well. Uh, I will be sitting, hovering over the screens because if he wins, he, uh, with the non-runner no bets, he's in the uh, Martin Pipe and he needs a £5 penalty for winning to get in. And if he does get in, uh, he'll be hugely well in if he wins this race because all the, almost all his rivals are, are rated higher than him. So uh, keep an eye on him. I, do, I just think he looks a really, really nice horse. Obviously, Ollie Murphy lost his, uh, his big Cheltenham one with Huntsman's Core uh, the other day. But uh, Whiskey in the Jar, if he gets into the Martin Park, could be very, very interesting. Frank, you're going to make it three votes for Whiskey in the Jar? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, couldn't have a beat. I think he was very impressive the last twice in that. I think he's a good horse in the making. I think he'd take the beating. Okay, 3.45 at Kelso on Sunday. See you at midnight and Bristol to I don't suppose you priced it up yet. Frank, any kind of feel for how that might work out? Uh, we haven't priced it up, but I imagine Bristol to would be very short. Um, Fours on uh, and three to one, something like that? Uh, yeah, I'd be thinking something like that. Like he heavy ground if it does go ahead. So that's exactly what he wants. And of course... He's had a wind up since he ran it at Cheltenham, so that might be significant. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if he's not very sharp, and I'd be very surprised if he's beaten. Kiel, see you at midnight. I've got him down as a potential national horse, but he's obviously got to show something here, isn't he? Uh, yeah, well, it's funny because um, Bristol Demar is running against two horses I've backed in the Grand National because I bet I just know as well, as well at a big price. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, you like that one, he won, the, he won the North Yorkshire National at uh, Patrick very easily last time. I'll be looking for a good one from both of them. It's not. It's worth uh, bearing in mind that Sea of Midnight absolutely thrashed uh, Bristol to my a couple of seasons ago in a small field race like this. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't completely rule it out. Um, just hope it goes ahead though, because you'd like to see him get out and get a run. Absolutely. And if it does go ahead, Tom, how do you see it transpiring? I'd be stunned if Bristol DeMai doesn't win, but he won't be getting any of my, any of my money on him, okay. certainly. Uh, All right, then, fair enough. Uh, anything else on Sunday? We've got the rest of Kelso, we've got Nace. Uh, I don't know where the other stuff is. I'm itching to get stuck into Cheltenham, so it better be good. Anything, Tom? No, nope, not me. Anything, Kills? No. Nope. Frank? Three knows. Good luck to all of you. Don't forget, like I say, we've got uh, postcasts every day from the course. We're really looking forward to bringing you all the latest news, all the top tips. Do join us every day for the racing postcast right throughout this fantastic Cheltenham Festival. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus,